അസ്സാം വലൈക്കും വഹമ്മദുല്ലാഹി വർക്കാത്തു ഇൻ ദി നെയിം ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ദി മോസ്റ്റ് മെർസിഫുൾ ദി മോസ്റ്റ് ബെനിഫിഷ്യൻ്റ് റെസ്പെക്റ്റഡ് മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി ജൂറി my dear brothers and sisters let me let me introduce me first i am an advocate based in bangalore though basically i am a keralite since i have got all my education and i was brought up in the city of bangalore it will be convenient for me to speak to you in english language so that i can express the all the aspects of the case in an effective manner let me first apologize to you therefore not speaking in malayalam you are all aware that india is the largest democrat democracy in the world we are also aware that we have got one of the finest constitutions which envisages the right of equality before law and equal protection of law it also also envisages life right to life and personal liberty in spite of all these provisions in the constitution it is an irony that innocent human beings are falsely implicated in cases connected with the terrorist activities in the name of national interest and public conscience maybe the 16th amendment act to the constitution might have given power to the parliament to pass legislations to impose reasonable restrictions on our fundamental rights of freedom of speech and expression but it does not give a blanket power to the parliament or anybody to pass a legislation which curtails which clips the wings of the people innocent people to enjoy their freedom and liberty the draconian acts like unlawful active activities prevention act before that it was tada and after that it was poda and when these cases tada and pota was repealed the same provisions if not the much stringer provisions were included in a very innocuous looking legislation of unlawful activities prevention act why is this happening it is not because our constitution and we say just that it is not because the 16th amendment to the constitution gives power to the parliament to pass such legislation if you read the objectives if you read the preamble of unlawful activities prevention act you will come to know that these stringent provisions are included in the act on dictation of the international international agenda it is all dictated because of some of the resolutions passed in the un security council and in consonance of that they claim that these provisions are included in the act this is very vicious this is the hidden agenda behind passing this legislation and misusing or abusing these legislations against a, a section of the people in this country abdul nasser madani 
is no doubt is a victim of this international agenda because of the ideology he had because he had voiced for the protection of the minorities protection of the dalit protection of other depressed and oppressed people it is because of that he has been implicated falsely in these cases that is the hidden agenda behind the implication of abdul nasser madani in all these criminal cases and not because he was involved in those cases he had suffered incarceration in jails to the extent of 9 and 1/2 years in coimbatore and salem jail in connection with the bomb blast cases in coimbatore he was acquitted honorably by the trial court and thereafter revision was filed against his acquittal by vested interest and in that they there also the honorable high court of judicature at madras gave a verdict in his favor and the result was that he was honorably acquitted in those cases of all the charges leveled against him that person should have been allowed to live a life peacefully here but that was not so that was not so in the year 2008 exactly on 25th july 2008 a serial bomb blast occurred in bangalore in nine places of bangalore experienced low intensity bomb blast and there was one death and some of the bombs were not exploded also this was happened immediately after the bjp came to power for the first time in this in in the entire south india when they came to power they did not have the required majority they wanted to get majority by sabotaging our constitution and the representative of people's act they asked the members of other political party to defect and they engineered this defect and after defection they resigned and the election was conducted in those election they again they became victorious and they came to the legislative assembly as member of bjp there was a hue and cry against this illegal practice and to distract the attention these bomb blasts were happened in the year 2008 immediately after that the investigation agency the crime branch of bangalore city the karnataka police they were clueless a direct a directionless investigation was in place nothing happened they could not find out who was responsible behind this then they found a muslim youth by name sami bagewadi samir bagewadi of the bijapur district and he was arrested in connection with the bomb blast let me tell you that person was subjected to narco analysis test polygraph test brain map and what all all the investigative methods third degree investigation methods were practiced on him and on his revelation disclosure there were other four people who were arrested but later on they the investigation team did not find any evidence against them they were let off the hook but a charge sheet was filed against this muslim youth sami bagwadi who was an engineer by profession a very energetic person 
a full fledged charge it was filed in the month of december of 2008 itself within 90 days of his arrest his arrest was made in the month of september 2008 when a charge sheet has been filed rightly or wrongly against a person in that yes of course there is a power for the investigation team to conduct further investigation with the consent of the court as envisaged under section 1738 of the code of criminal procedure in this case no consent no permission was taken but the investigation was going on thereafter by the middle of 2009 or in december of 2009 if my memory is right there were there were some report reported deaths from jammu and kashmir wherein four keralites were killed in a in an alleged encounter with the security forces and from the highly mutilated bodies of these persons a clue was found by the karnataka police some bus tickets some tickets wherein these people said to have traveled between a route between in a in a, in a in a specific route of the bangalore city please remember that these bodies were highly mutilated beyond recognition and this evidence was without any damage from that the investigation investigation was on and ultimately it concluded that a team of tadian david nasir with the 26 accused including nine people from abroad two pakistanis two national from oman and others they were charge sheeted 26 accused in the second charge sheet a natural question what will happen to semi bagewadi who was arrested and charged sheeted in this case semi bagewadi was demoted to the position of accused number 27 for some time after that his name was not there in the charge sheet kindly see a person against whom a charge sheet was filed when a second charge sheet was filed it is not within the powers of the investigation agency please remember this it is not at all within the power of this investigation agency to delete anybody from that list of accused it is only the court which has got power either to delete the name of the accused or to demote or change the position of that accused if a charge sheet is filed against one person then the second charge sheet has to be filed from the second person that is accused number 2 to so on up to 27 or 28 whatever that in that order but it was not so then after some time when this lacuna was brought to the notice of the investigation officer by the presiding officer of the court a formal application was filed to discharge for to discharge that sami bagewadi an order came in a gif in in a gif an order came immediately yes accused to one sami bagewadi is discharged the remaining 26 accused were there another natural question that you may prop up what happened to the semi bagewadi thereafter if he is accused if that accused is discharged in a case naturally he is entitled to freedom then no 
he was Im immediately transported to gujarat in connection with another case there and he was implicated in that case still he is in custody still he is languishing in jail that is the situation that is the situation then then happened the third charge sheet in which abdul nasser madani abdul nasser madani was made an accused even before he was interrogated even before he was arrested a charge sheet came to be filed a third charge sheet only in that the third charge sheet he has been implicated as accused number 31 the charge against him is criminal conspiracy along with accused number 1 and some other accused what is the evidence you have seen some of the evidence presented here another interesting evidence was this evidence because josvarg is said that he heard the word a blast in bangalore that's all that was not sufficient enough yogananda said that a person with a cap and a long beard had come to kurg that was not enough another person one rafiq and another person manjunath they also spoke like that therefore they fabricated an important piece of evidence according to them they examined a person called mm majid they recorded the statement of mm majid to the effect that when he was present with abdul nasser madani at his house the first accused nasir and others came there and in the beginning they hesitated to talk about this but abdul nasser madani gave permission then there was a talk of the conspiracy to plant the bombs in bangalore this statement of mm majid was said to have been recorded in the month of december 2010 when an investigation was made by us it was found this particular person was battling for his life in a in a hospital in ernakulam on those days when his statement was said to have been recorded it says in the charge sheet that his statement was recorded at kannur when he was admitted on 5 12 in the hospital and he died of cancer on 16 12 2010 and his statement was said to have been recorded on 11 12 2010 at kannur is is this possible does it stand to reason or common sense no when this was brought to the notice of the court while the bail applications were being argued then they changed the vers version they said no this was a mistake then they brought another piece of evidence in a verbatim manner they recorded the statement of another alim and said that the same way another witness has testified this is how the evidence has been fabricated but you may ask me then what is the impediment for the courts to grant bail here we moved for anticipatory bail when we came to know that he has been implicated and a charge sheet has been filed against him we produced the charge sheet before the courts and the court said there is a provision in the unlawful activities prevention act which bars any application for grant of anticipatory bail our anticipatory bail application was dismissed only on technical grounds because there is no provision then we then he was arrested then after the police custody we moved for regular bail the regular bail was considered 
and the court said there is a prima facie evidence we cannot say george varkis might have deposed in before a tv channel yoganand might have said before a journalist but that is not evidence what the police has given in the charge sheet what is said in the charge sheet this is not a case of ordinary nature this is a case where the national interest and public conscience is in question therefore that cannot be considered then came the order of the trial court that unless and until it says under the one of the provisions of unlawful activities prevention act 43d5 of the section 43d5 of the act says that unless and until a judge gives a clear cut finding that there is no prima facie case no accused can be granted bail which court will be ready to do that the same order was followed in high court and supreme court gave some concession regarding the treatment of abdul nasser madani because when we brought to the notice of the supreme court supreme court said yes there is a grave concern about his illness about his health condition and therefore some concession was given ultimately the bail application was rejected even without hearing on merits in a very cryptic order which says that yes which says that which says that the bail order is dismissed again we have moved for bail on the changed circumstances that is that is only for the medical grounds here what happens is this is not the our our contention is that there is no case but the court says that yes in such a case where the invocation of the provisions of the unlawful activities prevention act activities act is done there is no provision to grant bail therefore we will give you some concession regarding the treatment that is what has happened again it is coming up on 30th of this month before the honorable supreme court supreme court has given already two directions for the treatment that has not been complied with in in an effective manner that will be brought before the supreme court and we will definitely we will pray for release of abdul nasser abdul nasser madani for bail so this is the sum and substance of the case which i presented before you and i also appeal all of you to including the jury members that there is no prima facie evidence as such the trial is going on in most of the in, in, in the uh, there are about 1000 witnesses in all nine cases together and only 300 almost 300 witnesses were examined the trial is going on but sometimes the witnesses are absent but the prosecution is also not ready to bring the witnesses which has been connected with mr abdul nasser madani that is the difficulty we are facing we have also brought to the notice of the government and as salauddin ayub very rightly put it because the treatment which which mr abdul nasser madani requires cannot be granted while he is in custody of the court that is the difficulty we are facing because his sugar level is highly fluctuating unless and until the sugar level is brought under control the surgery to his eye cannot be performed his eye, the vision in the right eye has completely gone he can only see the 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 hand movement his vision in the left eye is 6 out of 60 as per the recent report which means virtually there is no vision unless and until immediately an surgery is conducted he the doctors will not be able to save even the remaining left eye but the difficulty is that his blood sugar level is not under control that is not brought under control unless a bail is granted at least for a limited period that cannot be done this is the situation prevailing now therefore i presented this case before you thank you thank you very much
మిస్టర్ ఉస్మాన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఎవిడెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్ అడ్యూస్డ్ ఈజ్ దర్ ఎనీ ఇంక్రిమినేటింగ్ ఎవిడెన్స్ బ్రాట్ అగెన్స్ట్ మిస్టర్ మదరి as far as the statements of the police is concerned it looks to be incriminating but we cannot say at this stage what will what what will be transferred in the court when it is taken for trial is there a witness remaining to implicate mr madani according to the prosecution the main evidence is in the form of the the telephone uh, connections that is some some of the Uh, t- uh, the data has been produced before the court according to them those there are some telephone calls from the uh, telephone calls uh, telephone of the accused to abdul nasir madani but even those telephone connections whether it stands in the name of the accused and the to, who, to which telephone it has come whether it stands in the name of the abdul nasir madani that has not been established is mr jose work is examined Joseph Vargas is not examined that is why i said that they are not examining the witnesses connected with mr madani it has been it has been taken the prosecution is delaying that process right now and mr rafiq and manjunad no none of none of the witnesses touching the case of abdul nasir madani is examined there is no oral testimony against mr madani so far, so far there is no oral testimony against mr madani telephone communication is between which accused and telephone telef- telephone the uh, cdr has been uh, the call data records have been produced that has been produced in respect of all the telephone numbers What, whether that is connected with mr abdul nasir madani and those accused that has not been produced there they are examining a police officer for that purpose which is that accused which is that accused yeah. with whom mr madani had converged in the telephone Not, nothing has been forthcoming nothing has been forthcoming because why, what has happened i will i will explain taking a, a two minutes i will explain this is why how it has been done is that they have given a list of uh, telephone numbers they say that this has been used by so and so so and so so and so and they say that there there was a telephonic call conversation from this number to the number some other number which they say again used by mr abdul nasir madani see the, the the evidence says that the person in whose name the telephone connection which was said to have been used that accused that person is not examined what the prosecution says that it is a fake number they have got id id proof and everything uh, another evidence is produced from the panchayat president or the secretary of that area stating that such a person was not residing in our locality this is how say they say that this is a fake uh, pro- this thing even though there is an id proof address proof everything they are not examining that person you have stated uh, regarding yoganand what the police intended to produce what about rafiq and manjunad what was the statement intended to produce through Re- Re- rafiq's statement is precisely that one s- certain day he saw a person alighting from a car along with uh, tadian david nasir and tadian david nasir told him that it is madani he doesn't recognize of his own and what about uh, manjunad also manjunad also says that yes. one day he saw and because he had seen that person in tv and other uh, channels he recognized him as madani he said the estate or somewhere yes just same same place yeah that is in that estate so these three persons are yoganand rafiq and manjunad they are they are, they are all from state. kudugu yeah kudugu but at the same time i w- i would like to stress that the persons who were there with madani that is those security personnel they were not examined they are not cited as witnesses no one question mr kurk who is asking the one? No, no. is asking so so one now now the political environment in karnataka has changed since the parliament election a, a congress government is there is there any attitudinal change on the part of the home minister or the karnataka uh, government in the matter of giving or allowing uh, bail to mr madani because a uh, 
the home ministry sacralites unfortunately i would like to say that there is no change in the attitude as far as the government is concerned because we had personally requested the people who are at the helm of the affairs at least to make a submission before the supreme court before the honorable supreme court that bail can be granted even for a limited purpose or for a limited period that is not acceded to on the other hand they engaged a senior counsel for that purpose and opposed the bail application so usman one 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 question uh, are there any ipc offenses which has been charged against uh, along, along with uh, the uh, apart from the provisions which has been invoked uh, as far as the unlawful activities prevention act is there are ipc offenses for waging war criminal conspiracy murder uh, attempt to murder and uh, for causing grievous hurt etc are there any incriminating uh, material to prove this primavasi any of these charges i, I didn't get you under, under ipc for conspiracy conspiracy murder etc yeah, there is a death of one person there is a death of one person in the bomb blast see abdul nasser madani has been connected only through 120b of ipc which deals with conspiracy so therefore their contention is that even if one person in the gang in the group has committed the offense it would be applicable to the other accused only conspiracy there is no direct overt act which has been attributed against mr abdul nasser madani which is very clear you said that uh, one of the key evidences which uh, the prosecution is going ahead is uh, the mobile conversations between madani or uh, the other accused is there any recorded evidence of these conversations or anything which they have submitted to the court or is this particular number belongs to mr madani i mean is the call being made by mr madani to these people or these people or the others have made the call to madani And i would like to stress one, one more thing. final thing is that is this mobile conversation is accepted as an acceptable evidence by the courts of law in this country i would uh, like to stress that as far as the conversation the record of the conversation is concerned no conversation has been presented before the court except the cdr the cdr gives certain numbers and from those number the call has been made to another number now let me tell you that none of these the uh, telephones none of these uh, telephone connection stand in the name of any of the accused none of the telephone connection which has been given as if it has been used by mr madani stand in the name of madani also it stands in the name of somebody else some party functionary wife of mr madani madani has no connection of his own at all and there cannot be any evidence to that effect but they say they have given some evidence saying that i was in this number see saying that uh, citing me citing including abdul nasser madani's father is a witness he says that i this is my this is the mobile number of my son but whereas that statement is not at all he doesn't know when that statement was recorded how the statement came to be recorded and as far as the uh, mobile that evidence whether it has got any evidentiary value in the you are aware that honorable supreme court has held in the parliament attack case that if uh, there if a established link between the connect, between the uh, uh, mobile phones if that is there suppose if stand in the name of an accused and if stand in the name of another accused uh, that uh, the link is established then that could be taken as a conclusive proof for conspiracy if it occurred uh, immediately prior to or immediately after the incident uh, if if by preponderance of the probabilities if we, if we can reach to the conclusion that it is in connection with that incident that could be accepted otherwise not one more thing i wanted to ask is that there is um, technologically it is possible that some mobile calls can be made 
in some, if, if, for instance, I, what I am trying to say is that somebody else can make a call from my mobile number to somebody else. And uh, I could be implicated for that. Is it a possibility or is, is this kind of, because there are, I think, technically now it is possible to just to hack into your system and send a message or just like in a, you can hack into your computer. Similarly, you can hack into your mobile phone. And uh, without my knowledge, my mobile can be used for sending something subversive message and then I can be implicated. Is this a possibility? It's a, it's a reputable presumption. There is a, it's a reputable presumption. Now, unfortunately, as far as we are concerned, we do not, because our contention is that this telephone number doesn't stand, uh, belong to us. That is one, one thing. And secondly, in the cross-examination of some of the nodal officers who have been examined in the case, they have very clearly admitted in the cross-examination that uh, the printout can be manipulated. The printout. Maybe the phone at the server stage cannot be manipulated, but while taking the printout, it could be manipulated. They have stated it very clearly in an ambiguous manner. Uh, sir, uh, uh, I just want to ask you one question. Uh, do you feel that there is something called Islamophobia in Karnataka court? And uh, do you feel a limitation of a Muslim lawyer fighting uh, for a Muslim victim and uh, you're not heard properly? And uh, what are the limitations uh, of, a, uh, of this phobia uh, of the courts uh, in Karnataka as far as concerned, you know? And when you fight this kind of cases, do you mean to, uh, so, uh, in case uh, you you have a uh, Islamophobia. Islamophobia, in case in, instead of your name a Muslim name, some other name of a Hindu name, it would have, would it have been easier. Uh, now the point is that what is the uh, why uh, the judges are not prepared to listen to the proper arguments. Uh, so far on, on this issue, uh, uh, what is the nature of Islamophobia in uh, Karnataka court? I cannot say without any clear proof that there is an Islamic phobia which is prevailing in uh, Karnataka state. But as it is there in any, any, every part of the, uh, this country and every part of the world that the Mus the, the Anti-terrorist law has been abused or misused against the a, a very sec, a section of the people. That is there. One more question, please. Being a lawyer hailing from the same community of Madani, have you got any personal difficulty in defending him? Any professional difficulty as an individual in defending him? in this particular case? So far, I have not experienced any such uh, any incapability, or? but uh, uh, in, this, in these cases, uh, as you know that I have engaged many, the, uh, many uh, senior uh, advocates. One of the senior advocates uh, who appeared for Mr. Madani in, uh, the Honorable, before the Honorable High Court of Karnataka was B.V. Acharya, who was the former advocate general. And uh, uh, Ravi B. Naik, who was uh, 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 judge, former judge of the High Court, and also uh, Mr. Ravi Varma Kumar, who is the present Advocate General. If, uh, the bar has cooperated with me, therefore there was no problem, but uh, there was prejudices, prejudices that was there. Advocate Usman, I just wanted to ask you, how many times have you applied for bail in, in this case, at, in total, in, at all levels? See, we have uh, applied for anticipatory bail. That was taken before the trial court as the law says that we have to approach the lost uh, uh, court of that order to get the bail. Then when it was rejected, we approached uh, before the high court and 
we approached the honorable supreme court before the supreme court took up the matter he was arrested and that petition became infructuous thereafter after his arrest we moved for the regular bail before the trial court when it was dismissed by the trial court we moved for uh, uh, bail before the honorable high court then when it was dismissed by the honorable high court we moved before the honorable supreme court which ultimately on merits it was uh, dismissed thereafter when the trial was going on we have uh, complained of uh, the uh, laxity in conduct of the trial and also the deteriorating uh, health conditions of mr abdul nasser madani and for the second time we moved the trial court Uh, we didn't move this trial court because uh, there was a uh, there was a observation in the high court the supreme court order that we can approach the higher courts therefore we uh, approached the high court and thereafter supreme court that petition is pending and it is being heard on 30th of this month in madni's case is there been any kind of objective media coverage or you know whenever the application for bail or something has been made or is it only been one sided there were several interferences from the media as as and when the case was listed for hearing even at all the levels from the trial court to high court to honorable supreme court there were there were media reports which was affecting affecting the bail plea of uh, mr abdul nasser madani adverse reports were published in the media invariably uh, i want to make a suggestion if you would please like would you consider uh, when you argue your bail application in the supreme court as an alternative prayer that witnesses which are con connected with complicity of mr madani may be examined in a limited period of time in a short time of let's say 10 days or 15 days so that his bail can be reargued on merits after all the witnesses connected with him are examined so we are definitely is... thinking of that option also and uh, even uh, sometimes uh, if uh, only we cannot say that uh, these are the people who are connected with our case uh, specifically we can say in connection with the third charge sheet we can ask for the expedition uh, expediting the examination of uh, those witnesses and we are uh, thinking of that uh, option before the honorable supreme court I thank am, i am saying that uh, please request the court to ask the prosecution to do that in the mind or in the uh, judgment of prosecution which are the witnesses which are connected with con the complexity of madani so they should be directed the prosecution definitely definitely as an alternative prayer we are yes. thinking of that option also thank you sir thank you